Oh, hi, my name's Ellen. You might remember me from such previous videos as how to make a wish.com version of a fiber optic stress and how to honestly not really successfully do many arts. Today, I successfully did an art, even a craft. As you may have gathered by the inordinate amount of pumpkins behind me, there's two. It's October when I'm filming this video, which means that I am filming a spooky craft. In fact, I am showing you how to make this cool little crow standing right behind me that has glowing, glowing LED lights that color change. I wanted to get a simple little crafting video out that wasn't eight foot tall or a 50 pound gingerbread house, which is my next upcoming video. The point is, I do something dangerous in this video and you should watch for that alone. If you would like to learn how to turn tin foil and air dry clay into this creature, then continue watching this feature. I printed out a basic image of a crow and cut it out. I used the image that I'd printed out as a template to make sure that I had a good shape. Obviously I wasn't going for perfect realism as this was a Halloween decoration, but obviously you also want it to read as a crow. When I was happy with the bulk of my foil and wire armature, I then decided to start covering this in air dry clay. I wouldn't 100% recommend air dry clay. It cracks a lot as it dries and you have to kind of keep filling in the gaps similar to foam clay. Polymer clay is a lot more long lasting, hard working value for money, but polymer clay is also a little bit harder to manipulate with your fingers. And I kind of wanted to go for speed here. I sealed my clay with a thick coat of PVA glue. I'm again, not 100% sure if this is the best sealant, but it was what I had on hand and it worked okay. Then I left the sculpture to dry for about two days before giving it a base coat of black acrylic paint. Now, while we wait for that glue to dry, let's delve into the mythology and symbolism of Corvids, an intelligent bird that plays many roles across religion, folklore, and modern fantasy. From Morrigan, the battle goddess of Celtic mythology, to Hugin and Munin and their relationship with Odin. Crows can give gifts to humans, use tools, solve puzzles, remember traps, and even people who have harmed or helped them. They prey on the weak and scavenge ruthlessly, much like humans in nature. And with a flock name like murder, they have long been associated with death. Morrigan, the battle goddess in Celtic mythology, appeared to her believers as a crow on a spent battlefield, scavenging the bloodied spoils of war. This symbolism is echoed in the Norse pantheon through the mythology of Odin. The crow is often used to symbolize a guide to the netherworld, leading its followers through the veil and into their fated death, or feasting on the dead slain in battle to take their bodies, piece by piece, to the underworld. It makes sense that crows have since been linked to darkness, magic, and death, given their shadowy forms, formidable cause, and fascination with that which has already been preyed upon. So something that I really like to do when I'm working on a project is spend a little bit more time staring at it than necessary because I find that while I'm staring at it, ideas start to pop out about how different it could be and how, how much more detail I could add in as I look at it. So once everything was dry and I came back to my crow, that's exactly what I decided to do. I wanted to add in glowing eyes. And my initial plan was to create like sort of evil looking red eyes. And I thought that was the LED diodes that I had, but what it turned out that I actually had was RGB color shifting diodes, which turned out even cooler. So I'm kind of glad that mistake happened. Because I hadn't actually initially planned on adding any eyes, I didn't have any eye holes. So what I did was I took my Dremel tool and I drilled straight through the crow's theoretical brain um, and made some little eye holes all the way through the clay and the foil taking care not to hit the wire armature because I was in the beak I was able to just go a little above which was where the eyes needed to be then I also <laughs> drilled a hole straight up into his brain again into his theoretical brain and then basically I put each diode string into each eye and threaded it down through the neck
So I'm not the most knowledgeable when it comes to electricity or soldering, but I do understand the very, very basics of creating a positive and a negative circuit and the amount of voltage required to power something based on the amount of voltage that eBay told me was probably the, the voltage that these LEDs were. The majority of LED diodes operate on three volts and if you're using more than one, obviously you're gonna to need to attach it to a battery pack that caters to the amount of volts that will be needed to power each light. So I attached two lights for each eye on this circuit and then I attached it to what was essentially a six volt because it carried two three volt coin batteries, um, a six volt battery pack. It's really important with this that you get a flat coin battery pack because even though they run out quite quickly, it is the easiest to hide. I also didn't use a resistor with this. I've never used one. Um, I should probably Google what they're for. And speaking of not knowing what I'm doing, let's talk a little bit about safety. So I did attempt to use a lead-free solder when I initially started this project because obviously lead is really bad for you. I didn't successfully use that solder and I ended up going back to my original lead-based solder. You can see me wearing an N95 mask in the footage, but in terms of safety, I would say that that's probably not good enough. I'm touching the lead with my bare hands. My pets were in the master bedroom, so they were well on the other side of the house. I would recommend that you wear gloves, you have a proper respirator, and if you can, you do this outside. It was not good for me, and I would recommend that you definitely adhere to better safety standards than I did in this video if you are working with lead. So I then filled the eye cavity with a little bit of hot glue to kind of diffuse and blow out the harshness of the LED diodes, and that worked really well. And I would definitely recommend doing that if you don't have resin on hand or if you're not comfortable using it. And even though you can see my cats occasionally in the footage, they're always only entering the room a while after something like the solder or the adhesive spray has disappeared. I was being really careful with them because I've been reading some absolute horror stories online of people and their pets working with toxic craft materials and it's very terrifying. So that's just something to be aware of. So to cover the wires up, I hot glued them to the throat, stomach and tail of the crow, including really heavily hot gluing the battery pack to the tail of the crow, making sure to leave the opening on the underside so that you can always change the batteries really easily. Then I went in with my spray adhesive and I used that to spray on top of the crow and then started wrapping wool all the way around to really hold the wires down. At one point, my terrible soldering skills came to play and I broke my circuit. While I was doing this and I had to pull a bunch of wool off and redo one of the wires, which was so annoying, not fun, would not recommend. Would definitely recommend me getting better at soldering as well as anyone who was doing any soldering, but you know. Also, random question, why do Americans say solder? Is it solder or solder? Anyway. So I wrapped the wool from behind the crow's eyes all the way down to just above the battery pack and this created a pretty solid covering for the wires. Then it was time to cover that wool in feathers to give the crow a more realistic look. I tried spray adhesive several times but for some reason spray adhesive doesn't stick to feathers. Luckily for me, because then it was time for hot glue which meant that the kitties could come back because hot glue is not toxic. Yay! I did my best to use the hot glue in a way that would make the sort of gross hot glue look stay hidden under each feather so I had to be kind of careful and wait for it to dry and pull the little spider webs off between every feather. Another thing that I found was that you obviously want to make the feathers curve in the direction that fits around the body. It makes everything look a lot more realistic and with the tail you want the feathers to fan out in a bit more of a tail fashion. My initial plan was to cut the tail shorter so that it looked more like a traditional crow tail but then I kind of liked it having this like long dramatic tail. I did snip a lot of the feathers around the chest and stomach area in half because I didn't need the full length of a real crow feather. And then on his chest, just around his neck and like the front of his chest, I used kind of like downy like feathers, again needed to hot glue them to give that fluffy sort of 
downy feather chest effect that a lot of birds have. To make the legs, I used a combination of the 24 gauge wire and floristry wire and I wrapped them all around into a strong kind of twisted formation and then I created four toes at the bottom so that the crow would sit. I used my Dremel to drill up into his stomach, filled that with hot glue and then stuffed them up there and he stood pretty solidly. I didn't have to do much fiddling with the evenness to figure that out. The last things that I did were I painted his beak kind of a blacky brown color and then I decided to give him a little bit of a fun little glamorous twist by adding more spray adhesive and just putting some green, purple, and rainbow diamantes all the way from his forehead all the way down the back of his neck so he was really sparkly. Thank you.